So I'm gonna make a recipe of pumpkin bars and we're adding fresh apples picked from our apple tree. Aloha friends, I'm going to make um, a pumpkin bar that's adapted from the um, Baker's Royale website. But um, instead of using the graham crackers, I opt out to, um, to go ahead and use these triple ginger snaps uh, from Trader Joe's or you can use any brand that you want. So other than that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and follow her recipe um, also, I'm not going to add um, the nuts. I think it calls for pecans with hers or walnuts. Um, I'm going to opt out so that the kids can have it um, as well. Um, it so. calls for apples, like she said, um, golden delicious apples shredded. About two regular sized apples. These are apples from my apple tree. So I'm going to go ahead and use three. And then I'm going to peel it and then I'm going to use a cheese grater to grate it. Okay, I went ahead and grated the apples and it turns brown really fast even though I added a little bit of uh, lime juice to it it's still turning brown so I'm gonna put that aside I'm gonna go get my ginger snaps and I'm gonna get two two cups worth and then I'm gonna put it into the food processor to grind it really All nice right, I've got my um, ginger snap nicely grounded and you can still see the little pieces of ginger in there I warmed up my butter have it nicely melted I'm going to go ahead and mix that together and combine it and put it into my um, 9 by 13 uh, pan covered with foil. Alright, got my ginger snap crumb and butter into the dish and then I pressed it down with just the measuring cup so that it's nice and firm at the bottom. And then after this I'm just going to go ahead and set it, set it aside. All right, so in a large mixing bowl, I have one can of condensed milk. I have a I have cup of pumpkin puree, and then a teaspoon of cinnamon. I have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and about an eighth of a teaspoon of ground clove. I'm going to mix that well together. I'm going to go ahead and mix that well together. Okay, now that it's nice and well combined, I'm going to go ahead and pour this mixture over the ginger snap uh, butter and cookie crust. Okay, so that's there. Pour that over. Mmm, smells really good already. Now since I peeled my <laughs> apple a little bit too early, it's okay, it's still good. I'm going to, um, and I just washed my hands, I'm going to go ahead and layer the apples onto the mixture and the lime really didn't help help at all but I I didn't measure it I had about maybe three or four pretty small ones so if you're gonna buy them at the store I would say you know two two regular size ones at the store is plenty now if you don't want to put the apples um, you can choose to put the, the marshmallow um, instead now another version that you could do, instead of putting the apples, you could also um, put the small um, marshmallows and then that would give it um, a nice texture that would hold the bars together. So since I am putting apples, I'm going to go ahead and not use the marshmallow. I'm going to add on sweetened uh, coconut flakes on top of this and it's going to be about one cup. So along with the sweetened coconut flakes, I'm also going to go ahead and sprinkle some chocolate chips. And then I'm going to mix this with milk chocolate and bittersweet chocolate. Because I just like to do that kind of combo when I make um, desserts. Okay. And then some walnuts. I think walnuts and pumpkins really go together. So I have some chopped walnuts. And um, I'd say add about a cup, but my family doesn't care too much for walnuts. So I'm just probably going to do about half a cup of walnuts. And then these are the bittersweet chocolate. And then I just like to make sure that they're spread around. The reason that I like to mix the, the milk chocolate and the bittersweet chocolate is that sometimes the milk chocolate can tend to be too sweet and then the bittersweet can be just too bitter sometimes. So when I mix that together, I, I feel like I have a good 
good blend. And that's about a cup of chocolate. But you can either do just plain bittersweet or plain milk chocolate. And then finish that off with the rest of um, the coconut on top. So that was one cup of coconut. All right, friends, there it is. So everything is nicely put together. I even packed it down a bit so that um, it, it goes into the, the pumpkin puree. I'm going to put this into the oven, preheated 350 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes. Just look for a nice golden um, brown crust on top with the coconut flakes. All right, I just went ahead and took it out of the oven. It was in the oven for about 35 to, um, to 40 minutes. Nice and golden brown on the top. That's when you know it's ready. I'm going to go ahead and let this sit overnight. I'll cut into it tomorrow morning. So, okay, so here it is. I cut into it. This is where I'm going to place it. Um, nice dish. And I placed it into the refrigerator overnight. So it holds its shape. I suggest to, um, to keep it into the fridge until you're ready to serve. Um, because it does, because of the pumpkin puree, it, um, it makes it a little bit, um, gooey. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Mahalo!